Welcome to another edition of Tool School. Today we have a special guest for you, so please pay attention, and as always, let us know if you have any questions. I want to introduce you today to Clover's Mini Beading Loom. It's both affordable and portable for the beginner and professional beater. Your package includes a mini beading loom, a beading needle, a darning needle to help lift up your warp threads as you bead, and I'll show that to you in just a bit in this tutorial, and a threader. Now let's get started on beading. Before you begin your mini beading loom project, uh, you're going to need to have a few items ready at hand. For this project, for instance, I'm using cylinder beads size 11 0. You're also going to want, most importantly, a pattern or design ready at hand. A good example of this would be the pattern design that comes with your mini beading loom package. It's the color wheel earrings. On here you'll notice that there is a grid that shows you how many beads you need for each row, what colors you're going to use, as well as what size beads you're going to use. Every beading project is going to be a bit different from the next. You're also going to want to remember too, as you begin putting your warp thread on your mini beading loom, you're going to want to have actually uh, one more warp thread than beads. So, for instance, if your pattern calls for eight beads going across, you're going to want to put down nine warp threads on your project. You're going to also want to work with a nice uh, beading thread. I'm using Clover's beading thread, an off-white color, and a pair of scissors, and I'm working on a, a fibrous mat that keeps my beads in place as I pick them up. So those are some things you might want to remember as you're working with your beading project. So the first thing that we're going to start with, which is part of our step one here, is we're going to begin putting warp threads onto our mini beading loom. You'll notice that on the back of your mini beading loom, you have stoppers here, and you can easily take those off. That's to keep your warp threads in place as you work. I'm gonna take some of my beading thread here, and if I lift up one of the stoppers, you'll notice that there are small slit grooves in the circle. I'm going to go ahead and lay my thread going across one of those grooves. And as I do that, I'm going to place my stopper right on top of there to keep my thread in place. Make sure it's nice and secure. And as you can see, it's very secure in place. Now, I'm going to be working horizontally on my beading loom, but you can also work vertically as well to create bigger pieces with your project. And you can weave those together to create even bigger beading loom projects. As I begin, I'm going to make a nice loop here one time and I'm going to just go ahead and go down. You can start wherever you like. And if you notice, there's teeth grooves here to keep my threads in place and notches going across to make sure that my lines are straight with my thread. And as I make my way down, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thread around the other stopper up here. And as I do that, I'm going to make my way down, move over to the next groove, and come back up. And then do that again with the next loop. And you're just going to keep going back and forth every time. 
as you warp your threads. This is what your warp thread should look like when you're finished. Notice that my threads are all straight along my mini beading loom and they're nicely tucked and snug and looped around my stoppers. You'll notice that when you come to the end of using your beading thread, you just go ahead and cut and put it on the stop here and anchor that in like I did the first time. And now you're ready to start beading. But before we start beading, we're going to want to thread um, some beading thread onto our beading needle. Go ahead and take a good size length of thread. Go ahead and take your, this is very helpful since the eye of your beading needle is quite small. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and put your threader right through the eye. And be and go ahead and thread your beading needle. Now, when you're going to start, you're going to want to tie a knot on the far left warp thread here. And the thread that you're using to bead with, this is known as your weft thread. It's the thread that you're going to be beading with and your warp thread is the thread that's going to be covered with beads. So I'm going to go ahead and go under my far left thread here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a simple knot make a tie. Now remember you always want to have enough thread on your beading needle to bead with as well. So make sure it's not too short. <laughs> you don't want to have to cut and tie threads together as you bead. So make sure it is a continuous thread. And you just have a nice tight knot and that's to keep your beads securely in place as we begin. Now we're going to start on step two of our mini beading loom project. Remember that you wanted to start off with tying a knot on your far left warp thread when you began. I have my darning needle ready and my beads at hand separated by color. For this design, I have 14 beads going across, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up my remaining beads and begin beading. I'm going to use my darning needle and lift up my warp thread so that I can go under my work. You always want to go under first and then for the second part you want to go um, over your beadwork. I want to make sure that my beads are all in place. And as I snap down with my beads, this could take a little bit of time just to make sure that you have everything in place. You can even use your darning needle as a holder. And I just go ahead and push my beading needle out. I keep a finger down to make sure that my beads stay in place. 
as I do this. And then I just push those down. As you can see, they're nice straight and across. Now for the second part, when I go back around, I'm gonna to wanna to go through with the eye of my needle. You never wanna go through the point. This is so that your beads stay nice and secure in your work. I wanna hold down my warp threads as flat as I can, so I'm gonna take my finger here and I'm gonna go ahead and hold those down so they're nice and flat as I go back in. and then you have your completed row. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more row so you can see that again. And I'm gonna pick up some more beads here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-bead another row so you can see that again. Remember, use your darning needle to lift up your warp threads as you work. And then you're going to go under and then remove your your darning needle and then just press down with your fingers or you can press down with your darning needle if that works better for you you go in through the second time, you go through with the eye of your needle while holding down your warp threads in place to make sure they're as flat as possible as you go in. that will complete your row. And you're gonna go ahead and continue beading your design going down here. Now we're at step three, which is removing your project. I have a completed project here that I was working on. Um, it's actually a pair to a pair of earrings that I'm gonna show you uh, to remove. By now everything is nicely beaded and in place and now we just want to begin removing it. You want to remove your stoppers and you'll notice I'll have these loops on either side. That's the continuous um, loop warp threads. And I'm going to go ahead and take those off. And as you notice, I have loops going up and down. And we're going to go ahead and do a method to where we can sort of hide these loops in our project so that we only end up with two long pieces of open-ended thread at the end. To do this, you're going to kind of want to find the middle, the middle of your work. by separating and untangling your loops.
And with this, you're you're gonna you're gonna be actually pulling them in an up and downward motion. So first, you're gonna to want to place a finger down. I'm going to put down two fingers to keep my work in place because I don't want my work to pucker up as I pull. I'm going to grab the middle one here and I'm going to go ahead and pull gently but firmly. And as I pull, you'll notice that at the bottom of my work I have the loops being pulled upward here so then they don't show on the bottom. As I do this, I move on to the next one down here, corresponding to the one that I pulled, so that it is an up and down motion each time to end up with those two long pieces of thread at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one down here. Just pull the next one over. And then the one down again here. And you're going to keep doing that until all your loops disappear. Now we're on the last step, step four of our mini beading loom project. Your project should look like this, where you're left with two long tails on either end of your project. After you were done in step three, removing it and uh, pulling on those loops. So that you just did an up and down motion with that, and then you're gonna be left with these two long tails that you're gonna now weave into your project horizontally. So I go ahead and have my uh, beading needle here, and I tied the tail onto, well, uh, went ahead and threaded my beading needle with the tail end here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just weave in and out through my beading project. you're gonna go through your beads actually as you do this back and forth to weave everything in. If you wanna work with a shorter thread, you can do that, that's fine, but make sure you leave enough um, out uh, to weave back in neatly. And I'm going to go ahead and just do this back and forth. And that's the second row up. And then I'm going to go ahead and weave into the next row. And then you're going to go ahead and keep doing that until all of your uh, warp thread is nicely and neatly woven into your project. So now you've finished weaving in your loose warp threads and your project should look something like this. A great point to remember uh, when you're doing a beading project is to use color thread that corresponds and matches with your beads. Uh, that way your project is more blended and uniformed. You can create a variety of projects with the mini beading loom. I have some examples here. You can make pendants, backings to a brooch. You can do earrings. You can also create a bracelet and then just weave beaded segments together, as well as rings. You can variety of things you can do with the mini beading loom. 
We want to thank you for joining us for this mini beading loom tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.